So let's continue the uh, discussion on non ideality, right? So we have been talking about ideal of M. Uh, if you remember, when we draw the characteristic of an op M, we talk about V in one, or maybe I call it V in plus minus V in minus, right? Remember, this is the ideal op M we have. We have plus, we have minus, we have two input and one output, uh, and I call it V out, right? So what is the V out? It is not a straight line, right? And the slope is A because an ideal of M supposed to have V out equal to A times V in plus minus V in minus, right? That is what we have learned, right? But in reality, right, if you're really going to measure it in this configuration, you cannot measure it actually because it's very difficult. Uh, but if you re if you allow to measure it, you will get something like this. Okay, so this is the the real one, and this is the ideal one. So you see that when we really do the experiment, assume you can do it in your lab. You did not do it in this way, right? You try to use another circuit to figure out this so-called offset. If you let's say you can do this, you find that this one does not intercept at zero, right? We expect if the input difference is zero, the output should be zero. But actually, I need to have a negative difference or, or a positive. Here we assume it's negative between the input plus and input minus in order to get an output equals to zero. And this voltage we call it VOS, the DC offset voltage. So what does it mean? Let's uh, try to model this a little bit. So we just say that I have an ideal of M, right? This is output and this is the input. This ideal of M still obey the equation we just wrote. However, in reality, it is just like that you have a voltage source with the size of VOS attached to your op M. And this is the real op M that we have on our test bench. Right, so this is the ideal. And this is the real. We can model it in this way, right? So let me show you that I can model this successfully, right? So think about, can you first tell me that what is the voltage of V plus? Sorry. Uh, v plus, yeah? So, uh, sorry, uh, let me call this V1 and this is V2. Yeah, so what is V plus? Is it just VOS? Should it be minus VOS? Because you see that the minus is here plus here, right? So it's just like an AA a battery on top of it, right? So what will happen to the voltage? It should be VOS plus V1, right? So whatever I put into my real op amp, it looks like it has additional voltage goes into this plus terminal, right? So, and then because the center one is an ideal op amp, then I have V out equals to A times V plus minus V minus, right? So this one, I cannot write it well. This is a plus. Okay, which is equals to A VOS plus V1 minus 
and V minus in this case is V2, right? Because it just connects directly to V2. Right? So as a result, due to this long ideality, thank you, my OM equation is V minus V1 minus V2 plus V minus. Okay? So in order to get V out equal to zero, I need to apply V1 minus V2 equals to negative VOS, right? If this is negative VOS, then it will cancel the VOS, and then my output is zero. So actually, I, I should put this as negative VOS instead of VOS, sorry. Right, so let me repeat what I'm talking about. First, your op M is not ideal. If it is ideal, the, in, the difference of the input multiplied by the gain will be the output. So when the difference of the input is zero, then your output should be zero, okay? But in reality, it is not. You will see this offset. We call it DC offset. And we can model it by saying that maybe I still have an ideal op amp, but just that it has an offset voltage here. This is not a real battery, it's just a model, right? You do not expect your op amp, they come with a battery to you just to trick you, right? It's just because of the nature of the op amp, it, is, it works as if you have an offset voltage there. And that's it. And here is just the map to show you that indeed, if I model in this way, I can show that the curve will shift to the left by VOS, okay? And why we have this problem? That is because later you will learn the differential amplifier. This op amp has a, uh, two inputs, has two inputs. You find that you need to make a structure so that they are symmetric, but it is impossible to, to have two transistors exactly the same. It's impossible. Right? I ask you to make something unless it's at atomic scale. You can say this hydrogen atom is the same as this hydrogen atom. But when I ask you to cut a paper into one millimeter square, you can never make them exactly the same. There's always some process variation. We call it process variation, right? And this causes the shift or the input stage mismatch. And because of this mismatch, that's why effectively it looks like you have an offset voltage. Okay, is this clear? Yeah. Now, this is just a model, right? So very good question. This is just a model. But I decided to draw, and many people do it in this way, the model is negative on the left, positive on the right. However, your VOS can be negative in value, right? It, it, this can be zero, can be one microvolt, or can be negative one microvolt. It, but the mode in this model, we just put negative on the left, positive on the right. Is that okay? Yeah. If you decide you don't want to do that, you want to put positive on the left and negative on the right, that is okay. All you need to do just that the value will be opposite now. Uh, when you were positive one microvolt, when you swap the uh, symbol, then it becomes negative one microvolt. Everything will still be the same. Yeah, so does it always shift to the left? No, this is just an example. It can shift to the right also. If it turns out the VOS is negative, then negative VOS will be positive. Yeah, and that is the main point. We cannot control offset because offset, offset itself is statistics. As I said, it's a process variation. When you cut the paper, you really don't know whether you cut it larger or smaller. And that's why in this analysis, we, we, we can never predict whether it's positive or negative. If we can predict, offset is not a problem. I just design my circuit so I can offset the offset, right? But just because we cannot predict, then this gives a challenge in our circuit. Okay, any questions? Now, if no, we can quickly take a look why this is a problem. And 
we actually kind of explained already is that when your inputs have a difference of zero, I expect the outputs to have a difference of zero also, right? But how about, for example, but, but when you have offset, it is not. When your input has a difference of zero, your output is actually, actually has a finite value. Now, what if I put this into this amplifier? What type of amplifier is this? Inverting or long inverting? Long inverting, right? This is a long inverting amplifier because the input goes into the positive terminal. And we have spent a lot of time to derive the equation. If you forgot the output, supposed to be 1 plus R1 divided by R2 times the input. Now, however, in this case, I say V plus. Because this is only true for an ideal of M. Right? So I know that the relationship, relationship between V out and V plus is this. And we went through the KCL, KVL, and all M equation to, came, to come up with this, right? Any question about this? This is uh, the first step. It is important step. Okay? Because this itself, this whole thing is... Right, this whole thing itself is ideal, right? That's why when I hook up with this feedback circuit, I have this equation. Now, but as an user, you bought it, as I told you, the real op amp you got is this one plus this offset, right? It's not a battery, again, it's just modeling. The real op amp you got is this whole thing, right? But that is fine. All I need to know ju just to find what is the relationship between V plus and V in. And very clearly, V plus equals to V in plus V O S. Right? So as a result, I just plug in, I get this equation. V out, yeah, is 1 plus R1 divided by R2, but it is not multiplied to the input I give it. It multiplied to the input plus the offset of the op f. Yeah. So if we in equal to zero, right? Ideally, I am doing a, a long inverting amplifier. I expect when we in equal to zero, we out should be zero. But in this case, when we in equal to zero, the we out actually equals to one plus r one divided by r two times v o s. Right, so if I make R one and R two R one divided by R two large, this offset is going to be amplified. There is one way depends on the value of offset. This is one way we can measure the offset. For example, it's one micro volt. Right in your experiment, some of you may get V O S equal to one micro volt, which is what is one micro, ten to the power negative six volt right very small you cannot measure with the equipment you have in our lab but you hook up with this feedback you make r1 one thousand larger one thousand times larger than r2 then you can measure the way out which is one millivolt and because it's one millivolt then you can deduce one millivolt divided by one thousand and one that is the offset of your circuit of of your op amp right yeah so I forgot which circuit we use in the lab, but the idea is similar. That is why we have that particular circuit to ask you to extract the offset of the op amp you have. Okay, that is a methodology, but the point here is that we talk about analog computing. Now, this offset you cannot prevent. And then if you have the offset, when I input zero, it gives me a really big output voltage, then it doesn't work. Okay, any questions? Okay. That is not a big deal.